everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've covered a lot on the low, low end of the PC market lately with those $200 notebook computers, but I wanted to see where the midpoint of the market is, so we uh, reached out to Lenovo, and they let us borrow this one. This is their Lenovo Edge 15. This is a, a $700 notebook computer that is being sold at Best Buy at the moment. It's got a 15-inch touchscreen, so this is a rather large notebook, so you want to make sure you've got a bag uh, that can accommodate it, uh, but it's a 1920 by 1080 display, so really nice uh, sharp display. This is like a real sweet spot, I think, for this resolution is at uh, the 15-inch level here. As a result, you get a pretty big keyboard here with a number pad, a nice trackpad as well. The display angle is very nice. Also, this is an IPS display, so you can uh, get a good view pretty much from any angle. Uh, it is very reflective, though, as you can see, and it's also a very responsive touchscreen. Now, what's unique about this is that it's also a convertible, so you can take the screen and kind of flip it around like so and put it into what they call stand mode, so you can uh, interact a little bit more closely with the screen that if you don't need the keyboard for something, you can go ahead and uh, load up your modern UI apps. I've got the little um, split thing going here, and you can interact with their Windows 8 applications uh, almost like a tablet. Now, you can't uh, detach the screen, but you can flip it over and be able to use it that way. And of course, you could use an external keyboard and mouse with it uh, at the same time you do that. What I like about it a lot is that this is made out of aluminum, so it's, it feels rather rugged. It feels a lot better than uh, this midpoint used to feel uh, back in the old days when everything was made out of plastic. This, they're definitely, I'm seeing a much better uh, build quality at all levels of the Windows PC market, and that is a good thing. It's also pretty thin, as you can see, not very thick. Now, under the hood, it's got a dual core i5 processor running at 1.7 gigahertz, so it's definitely a nicer step up from some of the less expensive stuff out there. Six gigabytes of RAM as well, which is nice to see. Uh, Intel 4400 graphics, so uh, it's going to be good for things like Minecraft and older games and some retro emulation. I'll show you some of that in a minute. Uh, not so good, perhaps, at the higher end gaming side of things, so if you've got some of the really up-to-date modern games that require a lot of heavy-duty graphics processing, uh, this probably isn't going to cut it. You can probably run those games like at really really reduced settings, but if you've got a really serious gamer that wants to run the latest and greatest, you might want to look at something a little bit more powerful. They do have a version of this with a discrete graphics processor, an NVIDIA chipset. Uh, that one costs about $900, but it gets you a much more powerful 3D capability. So if you've got a gamer that's looking for that, I would maybe suggest going there. It has a terabyte hard drive. It's a spinning drive, so when you're moving it around into that uh, other mode here, when we switch it into the convertible mode, uh, you want to be careful not to knock it around too much because those drives can be susceptible to uh, motion. I'm sure they've got some of those motion uh, parking features on board, but you want to be careful anyhow because anytime you move a notebook computer as the drive is on and spinning, you can always uh, run into some trouble there. So just be careful with that. Uh, it's got stereo speakers. The sound is okay. It's certainly uh, what you'd expect out of something like this. You know, not fantastic. So you always want to have uh, external speakers if you plug that in there. As far as ports and stuff are concerned, you've got an SD card slot here on the side for a full-size SD card. Uh, you have a uh, headset microphone adapter here, so you can use uh, headphones and in one of those headset combinations if you choose. Uh, USB 2.0 over here. You have a single USB 3.0 port on this side. I would have liked to have seen USB 3 across the board, but uh, you get one USB 3 slot, another USB 2 here, HDMI, and Ethernet as well. So pretty um, decently configured computer. And now what we're going to do is uh, see how it runs. So web browsing is a nice experience on here. I would expect as much from an i5 processor and six gigs of RAM. As you can see on my YouTube page here, uh, things open up very quickly and responsively. Uh, the videos start playing immediately. I think you'll have a good Netflix experience on here. Uh, certainly YouTube will run very nicely and just about any other website uh, that you throw at it should work just fine. I'd like to run this Octane test, uh, which is a browser benchmarking test that I usually run in Chrome on just about every uh, computer that I bring in here to look at. And it actually scores quite nicely. It got a, a score of 18,000. 681. Uh, so very nicely performing uh, web browsing device, and it certainly can keep up with uh, a lot of the more advanced web pages out there that have a lot of scripting and other things going on. So we'll take a look at some light gaming here. We'll take a look at Minecraft first. As you can see, it uh, really responds very quickly. The uh, trackpad is a little hard to control with Minecraft, but of course you could always uh, hook up an external mouse. And it might be a good time to you know, flip it into the uh, convertible mode for that kind of gameplay. Uh, but the, uh, the, the motion is very smooth. Even when you get close to stuff, uh, this is where it would really choke the lower end computers. This one is uh, really keeping up a nice frame rate, very smooth and responsive. And I think uh, things like Minecraft uh, will run quite nicely on it. Uh, retro gaming is also pretty good. Let's take a look at the Dolphin emulator and we'll see how that performs. All right, now we're running the Dolphin emulator, which is a GameCube emulator. And I like to run this because it really taxes both the processor and the graphics. And I think this is a, a really great way to see just how a computer can perform. 
uh, at tasks that require both. And although, again, this is not a high-end gaming machine, uh, it is great for some of this older stuff and for some of these emulators. And this is running at full speed, uh, 30 frames per second, and a really nice experience. All right, the last thing we'll look at is just some Microsoft Word stuff. So I usually load up this uh, template, which is a little bit involved. And as you can see, it seems to be working just nicely. So I can uh, add text here and not um, have any slowdown. And it just seems to be keeping up pretty nicely with what I'm doing. So again, an i5 processor. I'm not going to really expect a bad performance in Microsoft Office. You can see it renders pretty quickly on the page here. And we can edit this document uh, without too much difficulty. So uh, overall, this is a good middle-of-the-road computer. I like the performance, especially uh, you know, for low-end gaming, things like Minecraft emulation, retro games. Uh, all work really nicely on here. High-end gamers may want to look a little bit uh, up the chain a little bit at a higher-end machine, but uh, for most of what uh, you would use this for, this is working fine. And I think if you have the $800 or $700 to spend, uh, this is a really good entry point for something that is very, very usable and can really do most of the PC tasks that you'll throw at it. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.